Hey everyone, I am so excited to hang out with you again this month. Believe it or not, we're already in the month of November. Unbelievable. Now this month, we're all about the art of the shout out. You know what a shout out is, right? A shout out is when you let others know you're grateful for them. Your shout out might be quiet, or it might be loud. It could be written or spoken out loud. But the question is, what are you grateful for? Now, for some of you, that's a really easy question. Your answers will probably just fly off your tongue. You can make a list a mile long. But for some of us, this has been a really hard season and it might take us a minute to come up with a good answer. But this whole month, we're gonna talk about how we can be thankful no matter what. Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. I'm really excited to learn about this with you. Are you ready? Come on, let's check it out. Oh, fantastic. That was Johnny Boy and the Beef Jerky Boys running away from a fight. Up next, we got more hits for you. But first, let's take some calls. Hello, you are on WSO So with John. Hey, John, this is Steve at WJED in Skokie. Just wanted to give a shout out and say thank you for bringing so much joy to the people. Thanks, Steve. Right back at you. Hey, you're on the air with John. John, this is Barb and Vidalia at W-O-N Yun. Just wanted to say thank you. You're sweeter than honeycomb dipped in molasses. Keep up the good work, sugar. Thanks, Barb. Hello, talk to me. Hi, this is Brandon, your co-host on the So-and-So Show. I wanted to give you a shout out and say, you're the best host ever. But seriously, Brandon, if anyone is the best host ever, it's you, buddy. Uh, yeah. Uh, how about some music from Planet John's guitar hit, Chain Reaction of Love? You're not the only one who's good at impersonations. Whoa. Hello everyone, I'm Brandon. I'm John. <laughs> and um, welcome to the So-and-So Show. <laughs> so John. Hey, Jabberwocky uh, is a nonsense poem written by Lewis Carroll, included in his novel Through the Looking Glass. Yeah. yeah. Okay, John. Yeah. I mean, are you gonna do the show with me today? Oh yeah. Yeah, I just have to get my daily reading in. Okay, right now? Yeah. I mean, it's important to make a habit of reading a little bit every day, kids. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Today I'm reading this classic, The J in Kekalapadaya. <laughs> Do you have to read it in the middle of the show? I've missed a few days and I'm trying to catch up. Yeah, how, how, how many days? What day is it? Uh, one, two, three years. <sighs> huh, did you know? Did you know that Jacksonville, Florida is the largest city by land area in the continental United States? I did not know that. <laughs> this book is incredible. You can learn almost anything you want. As long as it starts with a J and existed before 1967. Yeah, I don't know why more people haven't read it. Yeah, me neither. By the way, <clears throat> if you don't know what an encyclopedia is, you can look it up on the internet, along with literally anything else you want to learn about. What? 
Not all jaguars have spots. That's crazy. John, please read that some other time. We're in the middle of something here. I know, but I found that I have a better chance of keeping a good habit when I habit stack. When you what now? When I habit stack. Yeah, I heard the word. It's when you take one habit and you stack it onto another. Like, I'm in the habit of doing the show and so show with you every week. If I stack my reading habit on top of that, then I won't forget to read. Okay, can't you stack it onto another habit? I mean, what's another habit you have? Well, when I wake up in the morning, uh, I have a habit of screaming before I do anything else. Why in the world? It clears the lungs. Oh, oh, fine, okay. Why don't you habit stack reading after your morning scream. Oh, because after my morning scream, I drink my morning coffee. Okay, then habit stack reading after your coffee. Oh, but that would get in the way of my morning cry. Is the paddle ball part of it? Habit stacking. Okay, so you've got a full morning. Uh -huh. All right, but we've got to figure out some place to stack your reading habit. Okay, we can make a game of it. Oh no. Oh yeah! Habit stacking heroes. The game is easy. Instead of doing habits one after another, we're gonna do them all at once. Whoever can do the most good habits at the same time wins. Make sense? Not at all. Let's play. Ready, set, go! Brush your teeth. Okay. Easy. Uh-huh. Look at that. Sit-ups. Zero. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, Practice math. Uh, what? Okay. Practice This is easy. Vocal warm ups. Oh. Cats can't kick cups. Cats can't kick cups. Do the bicycle. Oh. Cats can't kick cups. You're both winners. Oh. Oh. Really? Hey. I've never felt more productive. It's Bible story time with Cameron. <laughs> hey, good people. Hey, Cameron. Thanks again for uh, taking our friend Kellen's place this month. Anytime. What's going on with you guys today? Uh, habit stacking. You want to try? Um... Trust me, Cameron. It's a hard no. Okay. But habits can be good sometimes. In fact, today we're talking about a habit that began thousands of years ago that's still happening today. Awesome. Take it away, Cameron. You've probably heard of the Lord's Supper, or maybe you've heard it called communion, or even a really fancy word like Eucharist. Different people observe the Lord's Supper in different ways, sometimes every week or every month, or maybe a few times a year. Sometimes people use bread and wine, sometimes they use juice and crackers. But even though everyone does it a little bit differently, the reason they do it is the same. They do it to remember. When Jesus and his disciples were having their last supper together, they themselves were remembering something called the Passover. Hundreds of years before Jesus, God's people, the Israelites, were slaves in Egypt and God chose a man named Moses to rescue his people from the Egyptian Pharaoh. Moses said, Let my people go. But the Pharaoh refused, so God sent 10 plagues. Frogs, sick animals, flies. But the 10th plague, was by far the worst. Moses warned Pharaoh that if he didn't let God's people go, 
every firstborn son in Egypt would die, including Pharaoh's own son. But Pharaoh refused. God gave the Israelites a way to protect themselves from what was coming. They were to sacrifice a lamb, then spread some of its blood on the doorframe of their houses. This would be a sign for God to pass over that home and not harm anyone inside. That night, those with the blood of the lamb on their doorframes were spared. But Pharaoh's firstborn son died, along with every other firstborn son in Egypt. So Pharaoh sent the Israelites away. After hundreds of years in slavery, they were finally free. That's what Jesus and his disciples were remembering during their last meal together. They were remembering the day when God rescued his people from slavery in Egypt. But Jesus was about to give the celebration a whole new meaning for you and me. When Jesus had given thanks, he broke the bread and he said, This is my body. It is given for you. Every time you eat it, do it in memory of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Every time you drink it, do it in memory of me. Jesus knew that God had a plan for another incredible rescue. This time, he would rescue the whole world. And this time, Jesus himself would be the sacrifice. That's why we celebrate the Lord's Supper today. So we can show God how grateful we are to him for sending his son and so that we can get in the habit of remembering how Jesus gave his life to save you and me. The end. Wow. Right? Yeah, it's so cool to think that when we take communion or the Lord's Supper, we're literally doing something that Christians have been doing since the beginning of the church. That's over a hundred years. Try 2,000 years. I say again, wow. Yeah. It's important for us to have things we do regularly that can remind us to be grateful to God. Mm. Hey, you ought to have it stacked that, John. Yeah, I'll put that right after my morning cry. You see, Cameron. You don't have to explain. Okay. Thanks for the story, Cameron. You bet, guys. See you next time. (sighs) Looks like we've got some remembering to do, John. I'm ready to try, but it's just hard for me. I I can't even remember to send my Aunt Maisie a thank you card for my graduation present. Your graduation? Oh, yeah, I've been meaning to do it for 25 years. Reveal the question! (laughs) What helps you remember to be grateful? Well, doing the Lord's Supper helps me remember to be grateful for what Jesus did for us. Yeah, and being outside can help me remember to be thankful for all the beautiful things God made. Yeah, what about you? What helps you remember to be grateful? Not just to God, but to people, too. Yeah, talk about it together. And we'll see you next time on the So-and-So Show. And I'll be moving on to the K in the Incacalapaidia. Can't wait to tell you the major export of Kirkarikachistain. Kirkarikachistain. I can't wait either. Bye. Bye. Go first.
first two. I'm grateful for the way you've been a friend to me. Sing. Say thanks.